This story happened years ago when I was only eight years old, but I still remember it to this day. It was my birthday, and my parents had thrown me a big party in the backyard. All of my friends and family came. There was a bounce house, a magician, and lots of food and games. My backyard is large and surrounded by a wooded area. I was allowed to play within the yard, but was not supposed to go into the woods itself without a parent. We had just finished lunch, and a few of my friends and I decided to play a game of baseball. I was in the outfield. My friend hit the ball so hard that I chased it to the edge of the yard, just barely into the woods and out of the view of everyone at the party. I bent down to pick up the ball when I heard a voice say, happy birthday, Lucy. I looked up and was surprised to see a clown dressed up in an elaborate costume. I was confused because my parents hadn't told me they had planned for a clown to come to my party. Was this some sort of surprise they had planned? I heard you wanted something special for your birthday this year. Maybe a little four-legged friend? The clown said to me. He was right. In fact, at the time, the only thing I had asked for for my birthday was a puppy. I was pretty sure my parents were going to give me one today. How strange it was that the clown knew that. Maybe my parents had planned for the clown to be the one to present me with the puppy. Would you like to see your new puppy? He asked me. Hesitantly, I nodded my head yes. He gestured for me to follow him. I was old enough that I should have known better, but I was so excited about the thought of a puppy that I agreed to follow him into the woods. We walked in silence for about five minutes before I began to get a feeling that something could be wrong. How far away is the puppy? I asked the clown, but he didn't respond. The nervous feeling in my stomach grew greater. I think my parents might be getting worried about where I am, I said, but again, got no response. Another minute of silence went by before I said, I think I'm going to head back now. As soon as I said this, the clown whipped his head around and grabbed me roughly by the arm. He then began dragging me through the woods as I screamed as loud as I could for help. In a desperate attempt to free myself, I grabbed the clown's arm and bit down on it as hard as I could. The clown screamed in pain and in shock let go of my arm. I took my opportunity to sprint as far away from him as I could. I tripped on fallen logs several times and thorns cut into my clothes, but I just kept running until I finally reached my backyard. My parents, who had realized I was missing, looked incredibly relieved to see me. After a few minutes of trying to catch my breath, I eventually told them exactly what happened. They looked alarmed and my mother called the police as my father went around and told the guests that the party would have to end early for everyone's safety. Luckily, the police were able to catch up with the clown that attempted to abduct me that same evening. He was a creep that had been trying to abduct local kids for several months. Luckily, I never became one of his victims. Back when I was a freshman in college, there was a weird trend going across the country of people experiencing clown sightings. There were lots of videos of these encounters, and some of them were even on the news. My friends and I thought the whole thing was pretty funny, and we joked about what we would do if we ever personally experienced a creepy clown, but we never thought it would happen to us. The encounter occurred on the last week of the semester. I had taken all but one of my finals and was excited about summer vacation right around the corner. Sadie, one of my girlfriends, asked if I wanted to go with her to a big frat party that was being held that night. It was a Tuesday, and typically I wasn't one to go out in the middle of the week, but it sounded like fun to go let loose. That evening, I did my makeup, curled my hair, and then put on the outfit I planned to wear to the party. Just as I finished, Sadie knocked at my dorm room door. It was dark out at this point, and we knew better as young girls than to walk about on campus, past dark alone. We eagerly made our way over to the frat house, talking excitedly all the way. The night was successful, and we enjoyed several drinks and did plenty of dancing. It was around 1 a.m. when we decided it was time for us to head back to our dorm room. We chatted all the way, discussing the events of the party. The streets were mostly empty, and I knew most people were in bed. We were about 10 minutes walking distance from our dorm when we heard an odd squeaking sound. We spun around and discovered a tall clown standing behind us in full makeup. Haha, ha, very funny, I said sarcastically, assuming it was someone playing a prank on us. We continued on our way, but the clown continued to follow us squeaking his red nose repeatedly. After a few minutes, I began to feel a little creeped out. Okay, you scared us, now go away, I yelled at the clown, but he only continued to follow us. As Sadie and I picked up our pace, the clown did as well. Suddenly, I heard a loud scraping sound behind us. I turned back to look and discovered the clown was dragging what looked to be a machete along the pavement. 
I let out one sharp scream and Sadie and I took off running as fast as we could towards our dorm. The clown chased us and at one point I was sure he was going to catch up with us. I urged Sadie to keep up her pace and we didn't slow down until we finally reached the lobby of our dorm. Immediately we told our resident assistant what had happened and she called 911. To this day, police have never been able to find the creepy clown and we have no idea who he was or if he was dangerous. I'm from a small country town where just about everyone knows everyone. It's a safe town and doesn't usually have much crime. I played track in high school, which meant that I had to do pretty long daily runs just to stay in shape and prepare for meets. I typically tried to get these runs completed right after I got home from school, while it was still light out. Even though we knew all of our neighbors and felt safe in the area, my mom still preferred that I didn't run alone at night. One day, I had a particularly large homework load that took me most of the evening to finish. It was 8 p.m. and the sun had just set, but I still hadn't been on my daily run. I asked my mom if I could do the run quickly, but but she was hesitant to give me her permission. I told her that I would even cut my run short and be home in no more than 30 minutes. Reluctantly, she agreed, but she told me to make sure to take my cell phone in case I ran into any trouble. I grabbed my phone and earbuds and ran out the door. I was jamming to my music as I made my way through the familiar downtown streets, occasionally slowing down to wave at some of the local store owners that were closing up their shops for the night. I was just about to turn back towards home when I spotted a red balloon just barely visible from in between two shops ahead of me. I continued jogging by, assuming the balloon probably belonged to a child. But as I approached closer, I was surprised to see a clown dressed up in full costume, holding the balloon while staring at me intently. This seemed strange. After all, it was late and there was no one around. It wasn't like there was a carnival anywhere nearby. The clown seemed sketchy and out of place. Even if it was a joke, I still found it to be creepy. I decided to simply increase my pace and ignore the clown as best I could as I passed by. Right as I was about to pass the clown, I noticed it shooting me a wide, terrifying smile. It had rows of sharp, pointy teeth that looked almost inhuman, and its eyes were yellow and sickly looking. I tried not to let my fear be visible on my face as I was shot off like a bullet towards home. My breath burned in my lungs as I started running faster than I ever had in any track meet. I took one glance over my shoulder and saw that the clown was running after me. I pushed myself to continue moving as fast as possible and I had never been more glad for many track practices I had endured in my life. While I hadn't enjoyed them at the time, they were the only reason I was outrunning the clown at this point. I had nearly reached my house when all all of a sudden I tripped on the uneven sidewalk. My knee twisted so hard that I saw stars and I instantly knew I was injured. Still fearful for my life, I dragged myself to my house. The second I reached the doorstep, I began calling for my parents. They looked just as scared as I was when they saw me. We later contacted the police who searched the entire town for the stalker clown. It has been almost a year and the clown has still never been found. I often wonder what would have happened if he had caught up with me that night. Have you ever had an experience with a clown? Drop a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe for more spooky stories. Sleep tight.